What's going on YouTube? West Hobbies RC. So today we are back with one of the most asked questions I have gotten. The Goblin Raw 420 or the Goose Sky RS4. So we're going to go ahead and get started. We're going to break them down on the bench and then we are going to go get a flight on each one of them. Come back, tell you my final thoughts. So go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and let's so get started. We're going to start with the Goblin Raw 420 here. So as you can see, we have our 420. So now we're going to start with the head and work our way down. So we have 420 millimeter carbon fiber blades. Of course, aluminum blade grips, aluminum head block grips with a sacrificial carbon plastic arms. We have a five millimeter feathering shaft and a eight millimeter main shaft. Typical washout arms, four points on the swash plate, plastic anti-rotation bracket to work our way down to our servos. Now we have a carbon fiber, very strong canopy that is held on with four bolt holes. So you can still load your battery in and out with the battery locking mechanism. You have a place to hold your XT60 connector. So your battery slides in, locks on the opposite side. You have a lock tab. Of course, it is a direct drive, belted tail helicopter. So we have our belted tail down here, our pulley, our direct drive motor, up to our little transmission block to our main shaft. So full direct drive with a one-way bearing. So you can see our motor is moving. We rotate the head this way. We have a one-way bearing. Carbon fiber frame sides, decals down to some stiff nylon skids that are very strong. Your choice of ESC, 80 amp ESC, and we are running torque micro servos, but you can run either servo that you would like in the micro range. You can also get a full size servo mount, but this is a traditional. We'll pull the canopy off in a second. Our tail servo is a mini. We can hide the tail servo inside the mainframe here. So the tail servo is tucked out of the way, very clean and stylish, very sleek. I really like that. Working our way back, aluminum boom, now you can get them in yellow or orange. You can also get them into traditional black. Moving our way back to our aluminum open tail housing, carbon fiber skid that is very stiff. Running our pulley, which is aluminum, our tail shaft, as well as our aluminum blade grips, carbon fiber tail blades, our plastic pitch slider and arm, and then our very thick plastic bell crank carbon fiber push rod with these nice little caps to help the push rod be secured when epoxied into place. So now loading the battery in and out is very simple. We have a Pulse 6S 2600 milliamp battery. You can fly this model from 2200 to 2600. I like it on 22, 2400 is my preferred battery size because the helicopter is very lightweight and very good flight time. So you're going to slide your battery in on a carbon fiber tray, you have your battery latch here. You go ahead, you rotate it to the open position, push your battery into place, rotate your latch, your battery snaps in, it is not going anywhere, and then you just plug your battery right into your XT60 on the bottom, you are ready to fly. We have our traditional servo layout with your front aileron and pitch servo and your back elevator servo, which is traditional to SAB and a lot of other companies. We have the option of a motor guard. They don't come with the kit, but you can add them to protect your motor in a crash. We have a very simplistic design. So this kit builds very fast, very easy, couple bolts, and you can work on everything here, take bolts out without having to mess with your wiring or your servos. So that is a good thing. Running the Icon Fly Barless unit it is your choice on the Fly Barless, and we are running a Hobby Wing 80. Again, it is your choice. You have your ESC tray down there. You can put whatever ESC in that you want. So now let's move into the Goose Sky RS4, and then we will set them side by side. So now we have the Goose Sky RS4 on the table. So we'll start with the blades and work our way down. So we are running a 390 millimeter carbon fiber blade. Aluminum blade grips with aluminum arms. We are running a four millimeter feathering shaft with a six millimeter main shaft. So right there, big difference in size on the shafts. So now we have our traditional mixer for our head and we have our traditional swash plate going down to our servos. Now we have a fiberglass canopy 
So different than carbon, it's a little bit softer and weaker, but it does the job. So we have a fiberglass canopy, carbon fiber mainframes, and of course, a direct drive motor with a belted tail. And we also have a one-way bearing as well on this model. So now we move down, we have our nylon skids that are very flexible. I'm personally a nylon skid fan. They work great in a crash. So now we move back to our tail servo. One thing that I do not like is the servo hanging out the side. It doesn't look very clean, but it does the job. I think we could have put the servo in between the frame down here and it would have just cleaned the back of this up a little bit. But that's beside the point. We are running back to an aluminum tail boom and a carbon fiber push rod. Now this is a solid carbon push rod with screw on push rod ends. If you sand them, they will not come out. Tighten them really good. They work great. So we're running back. We have our push rod guide in the middle of the boom here, going back to our open boom and our open tail casing with a carbon fiber fin. Now this carbon fiber fin is much weaker than the raw 420 fin, but again, it does the job, stops your tail from smacking the ground. So we have our aluminum tail casing, aluminum pulley shaft through our plastic pitch slider. We have aluminum blade grips, both tails are dampened. So we have a feathering shaft thrust bearings going through. We have a plastic carbon composite tail blades, which are very stiff. So they do work really well, but our bell crank here is very thin, but it does work. So now we will move forward and show the battery mechanism is going to be the same. So we have an open mouth our battery slides in on a tray. Now, instead of a locking mechanism, we have a little push tab here. So now we can slide our battery in from the front here. We have our Goose Sky included 1800 6S, but they are HV packs. So the voltage is a little high at 22.8 volts. So now you have a, I think this is a G10. I don't believe this is carbon fiber, but it's a very stiff battery tray and it is going to slide into the helicopter just like this. So it slides right into place. You don't have to twist the knob or anything and you can hear it click. The battery is locked in. Now you can pull on it and it is not going anywhere. And you also have your XT60 built right into the ESC. Your battery just plugs right into there. Very simple, very easy. Now, one thing that is different between the 420 and the RS4 is our canopy. On the 420 is screwed on with four screws, two per side. On the RS4, there's a magnet in the back right here and then four grommets. So you can just pull that magnet, pull your canopy, pop it loose down here and your canopy will come right off. So if you need to do any kind of adjusting, your canopy comes off in a couple seconds. No need to pull any screws. So now a few things that are different at first glance is the servo layout. So if you look here, this is a non-traditional way to do the servos. A lot of people don't like it, it works great. As long as all your servos are moving together, you will have an equal throw, same equal distance from your ball to your servo horn, blah, 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 it goes up and down, everything works the same. It is non-traditional, so it is a little different, but we have our aileron, our pitch servo, our elevator servo, just in a different layout nice thick carbon mainframe and we have a great spot right here to put your receiver either a satellite or a full range receiver depending on what you are doing our esc now is going to be screwed right in at the bottom so this is a goose guy 70 amp esc and it screws right in now if you don't want the plug and play version you will get a tray just like the raw 420 that will go there and you can secure whatever esc you would like hobby wing anything like that we'll go right to that tray now you do get a, of course, plastic anti-rotation bracket. And the one thing I do like, is, it's a good thing, is the fixed linkages here. So for a first time builder, this makes it very simple. You don't have to worry about measuring this and this. You only have to worry about measuring this one head linkage right here. If your servo is 90, your swash plate will be level, which is very nice. So now we have our included Goose Sky Fly Barless unit with the Bluetooth module. And this all comes in the plug and play version. We have both canopies removed and both helicopters side by side of each other. And we have them stacked at the main shaft. So I'm trying to do it as best as I can at the same exact length. So we can kind of see a little bit of difference in the helicopter. So as you can see from about right here, the raw 420 sits a tad bit higher. And if we move back on the boom here, the 
raw 420 is a tad bit longer so i would assume it's about an inch longer but the boom diameter the same on both models at 20 millimeters so we can see with the sitting the raw does sit a little higher a little bit more angle to it than the goose guy and blade length wise the 420 blades of course are longer than the 390 millimeter blades on the goose guy at 30 millimeters longer so now we can really see the traditional differences in the servo layout here when you're looking at them side by side. There's the Raw 420 and the Goose Sky RS4 differences. So you can kind of see it there and there. And of course, you can add whatever FBL you would want on the Goose Sky if you buy the kit version or the plug and play and just change the FBL unit out. So now you can kind of really see here the difference is on the sleekness design of the tail servo. So we have it sticking out to the side here and then down there on the 420, it is tucked in. So let's throw the canopies back on these two models and let's go to the field and get a flight comparison in on each one of them. We're at the field and we're about to get a flight on each one of these models. So we have the SAB raw 420. We already know the setup and the specs on this one and we have the Goose Sky RS4. So this is a full stock kit build, everything that you get in the plug and play. And of course, torque servos, Icon, SRXL2, Hobbywing ESC, Pulse battery. So that's the stock battery. Both are flying on the Spectrum IX14. So we'll start with the Goblin Raw 420 and then we'll move to the Goose Sky RS4. So we're gonna go ahead and spool up on the Goblin Raw 420. I'm gonna do my best to fly the same both ways or on both helicopters or at least try to, so we can get a fair comparison of both models. So now we are gonna spool up. The only difference between the two helicopters are gonna be fly barless unit and battery size. This is a 2400 and the RS4 is a 1800, both on success. So right off the bat now, this one does have a slight tail wag, but it is a brand new helicopter, very solid machine. This is no auto level. This is just out the gate hovering. So very solid. Tail performance is awesome. Incredible tail performance. Flight performance of the helicopter is fantastic. Very nimble, able to kick it around. So now we're gonna go into idle up one. So now this is going to be about 2,800 RPM. Now we're gonna kick it up into a high head speed. It'll be about 3,200 RPM, power punch out. Negative, catch it. Very nimble. The helicopter just feels great. It feels good, it's solid. Now, granted, this one does need some tuning. Now we'll go back into a lower head speed. So this is idle up one. I mean, we'll try to get it here to where we can do a hands-off hover. A 
a little bit of positive. That's a hands-off hover. Very solid machine. Tail performance is incredible on the Goblin. Now, yes, there is a little bit of a tail wag. Tail rate is consistent. Left and right pirouing is consistent. So let's go ahead and set this one down and let's grab the RS4. So now let's grab the RS4 and get a flight in on that. So we got the Goose Sky RS4, four minute timer on both models. We have the stock battery in the Goose Sky. This is 100% how you will get it out of a plug and play kit option. So we're gonna go ahead and spool up. Now auto level is on in normal mode. So a very solid helicopter. You can see it doesn't want to move around. It's very solid. Tail stops and performance are good. Piro is consistent. Now I have noticed, I've got quite a few flights on it now, and I have noticed that the inconsistent of the Piro can be inconsistent. All right, idle up one. Power is good. Again, the, the, the dead band is not great, but here's a, give it a little bit of positive, hands off hover. Tail performance both ways. I have noticed though, again, that the Puro inconsistency. head speed now power full punch collective negative catch it now the head speed does sound higher but that's because the blades are shorter Governor does work good on the stock ESC. back into a lower head speed. It takes a second for it to kick down. You'll hear it now. There it goes. So the governor mode of the ESC does take a second.
we're gonna add our four minute timer. Let's go ahead and land. So there you guys go, a flight on the Goblin Raw 420 and a flight on the Goose Sky RS4. So let's head back to the bench and let's finish up this video and I'll give you my final thoughts. We are back from the field and as you guys just seen, a flight on each one of these models. So now here's my final thoughts and my personal opinion. So I'm going to first start by saying buy whichever helicopter makes you happy because at the end of the day, whatever one that I like more or the other one may not be what you like more or the other one. So I'm gonna start with the minuses of the Goose Sky. Great helicopter and worth the price. Every penny, I think it is a fantastic deal. Now, the thing I do not like is, I do not like the non-adjustability of the fly barless unit. I think if Goose Sky can release an update that allows us to fully program stick dead band, all that kind of stuff, rotation rate in degrees, all that kind of little stuff like you can do on a traditional fly barless unit, I think it's a home run. The fly barless unit's very limited and I just don't feel connected with that fly barless unit and it's just my personal opinion. I don't think that it's just, it's just not connection for me, but you may like it. The puro inconsistency rate, I don't like that either. Again, that could be tuned out with a adjustable fly barless unit. Overall design of the model, fantastic. You can't go wrong with it. Great tons and tons of power, great flight times, very stable, flies great. They did a good job on the blades, everything like that. Now, I think that in the kit, they should give you predetermined servo arms so you don't have to cut them down. I think that would be great. Also for belt tensioning, do it the old school way where you grab the boom, pull it back, hold your thumb here, lock the screws down. Some kind of tensioner would be very nice as well. And I think that the ESC is perfect. Tons of power, Governor works. Uh, the canopy is, even though it's fiberglass, it's still a great color scheme, very nice. I would like to see maybe in the future a motor guard to help protect the motor. But all in all, I think this is a very good design and Goose Guy did a very good job. Now, SAB, you cannot go wrong with SAB. SAB makes a fantastic and quality helicopter. They have a bigger main shaft, bigger feathering shaft. They made it a little bit more beefy. Uh, I like that you can get the motor guards to cover the motor. It's just something that added protection. I like the belt tensioning system. I like how they give you a little tensioner, like on all the Raw series, where you can properly tension the belt to wherever you think is good and where you like. I like that the tail servo is inside the helicopter, and I like that you get to pick and choose. Now, one thing I do not like about the Goose Sky is you are limited to their servos. With that design, you can only use their servos. With the Raw, you can use whatever servos that you personally like or have laying around. The helicopter is a great design. It has good flying characteristics. The, Goose, the, the Raw 420 is easier to build than the Goose Sky. It's a lot more of a simplistic helicopter. So they really well thought out the mainframe, you know, motor plate assembly, the way the servo mounts go on. There's a lot less part count on the Raw 420 than the Goose Sky RS4. So there is a big difference between the two of them there. The color schemes that you get is awesome. They did a great job with tail. Tail performance on both models is fantastic. Now, of course, the RAW 420 is more money. So as the time of filming this video right now, if you were to buy a RAW 420, everything brand new shipped to your door is going to be about $1,150, give or take a little bit. The plug and play Goose Guy is going to be $699 for the plug and play kit, plus your satellite receiver or your receiver, however you're gonna set it. Now you get your battery, you get everything you need for the Goose Guy. So you're looking at $700, $1,150. Now, of course, if you have your stuff, you already have servos, you have a fly barless unit, then you can be into this for $600 is what the kit costs. And again, this is at the time of filming this video, prices do change and that's why I don't talk about prices in videos. Which helicopter? do you want or do you need? I think they're both fantastic machines. And personally, I lean towards flying the Raw 420 more, but that is simply because I'm not 100% connected with the Goose Guy. So I need to, I've done a lot of flights on it. I got about 10 flights on it now. It's better than it was, but it's just still not there. So I'm hoping that we can come out with an update for that fly barless unit. If not, I will throw an icon in it. And I think it is great. 
Now, the power of the Goose Guy is really good, but that's also a shorter blade distance. I think if you threw 390s on the raw, the power would be identical. So let's go ahead and weigh these two. 20 on the scale is two pounds, 13 point ounces, eight ounces. Now this is not with a battery, but this is everything but a battery. So 1,298 grams. 1,720 grams ready to fly on a 6S 2400, which is what I fly it on, or three pounds, 12.7 RS4 without the battery, ready to fly, two pounds, 3.7 ounces, or 1,014 grams. Ready to fly with the included 6S 1800 milliamp battery is 1,330 grams, or two pounds, 14.9 ounces. So it's two pounds, 15 ounces, ready to fly weight of so the that RS4. is a 390 gram difference between the two helicopters. So the Goose Guy RS4 is almost 400 grams lighter than the Goblin Raw 420. That is a big, big weight difference between the two helicopters. Now, granted, the milliamp difference is different. You know, you're talking 1800, 2400. So I'm sure you could shave a little weight off of the raw 420 with an 1800 or 2200, but I can't see it being 400 gram difference in weight, probably, you know, good hundred gram difference, maybe 80 grams. But that is my comparison of the two models. Now, again, whatever helicopter makes you happy, whatever one you like, you buy. I can't tell which one I like better right now. Raw 420 for sure. But that is just because of the fly barless differences. I do not 100% like this fly barless unit. It's not connected. I'm not one with it. But I think if we can get Goose Guy to allow us to fully program this fly barless unit and allow us to do everything, rotational rate and degrees, dead band rate, all that kind of stuff like you can with a traditional fly barless unit, I think it would be a fantastic combo. But the servo power is great. Tail authority is great. Tons and tons of tail authority. Tons of cyclic authority. The Raw 420, the same, tons of cyclic authority, tons of tail authority. Helicopter is super stable. Both of them are rock solid, as you've seen in the video. Hands off hover. Incredible machines. Both of these machines are incredible helicopters. I think the Goose Sky RS4 is worth every penny. The Raw 420 is worth every penny as well. And of course, there is little differences when you're trying to compare the money differences there's little things like on the goose guy you have to manually hold the nuts when tightening the main blades and tail blades on the raw 420 they are machined into the blade grip so the nuts fit perfectly just little stuff like that you can go through the whole model and the differences the raw 420 is easier to build 100 than the goose guy but the goose guy builds very quickly so it just depends on how much money you guys want to spend what the parts availability looks like in your area, in your country, everything like that, and which one you simply like better. Some people are going to like the Goose Sky way better than SAB. Some people are going to like SAB better than Goose Sky. At the end of the day, whatever helicopter puts a smile on your face, whatever helicopter you enjoy flying is the one that you buy. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, take care, and have a great day.